Hallelujah. Boy, I thank you so much for that powerful ministration. Um, it was so heartfelt. It was like we shouldn't stop. Thank you. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And I want to thank our Father, our pastor in the house, and his dear wife. Thank you for the privilege, sir, to present the word of God to these great people. Thank you, sir. Um, like I said in the morning, he's not just your pastor. He's my pastor. He's my mentor. There are so many things. I, I mean, our ministry, we are two years now. I remember how I called him midnight so many times. And he's just embodiment of wisdom. He would just say, do this, do that, pray. You know, it's just a lot, to be honest. And, and this is the thing. In every sphere of life, you need to, you got to have someone. And so he's been an instrument for our ministry. Uh, we turned two years July, and God has been amazing. People have seen a lot of things. And so I bring you greetings from Nottingham, Soteria City International Gospel Church. Soteria is a Greek word for salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. And so please, let's just move into what we have. And I thank the minister, all of the ministers, the pastors in the midst. So I thank you for your humility and for all of the love in the house. And everyone that have actually postulated the word of God. Maybe you said to someone, God bless you. The media team, you guys are doing wonderful things. Wonderful things. I mean, the, uh, the ushers. Man, come. Maybe, you know, maybe, sir, maybe we just come take some people to Southampton, okay? <laughs> to come and teach our team. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're still learning. We're still crawling. But we know God is helping us in Jesus' name. But you guys are good. Thank you for the privilege to be here. All right. So please, let's go to the word of God. Hey, guy, chapter number one. Hey, guy, chapter number one. And we're going to read. And this is the... Um, you know, the book of Agai is just two chapters, chapter 1 and chapter 2. And so we're going to look at the, the, the first part because Agai is a prophet. And he's just a prophet that is trying to speak the mind of God for people. He's trying to call people into examinations and trying to say, are we doing what we're supposed to do? Are we doing what we said we will do? And so please, let's just go there and so we can move with speed. And Agai chapter number 1, verse 1, I will read quickly. This is talking about call to examination. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Agai, the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. Now listen to this part, saying, Thou speak the word, the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says... This is, you know, the, the, the people just, uh, they said it and they, they try to mean what they're saying. By saying, as soon as we come out of this trouble, as soon as we come out of, from these challenges, we, we're just going to serve God. The people saying, this time has not come. The time that the house, the Lord's house should be built. The, the, then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, and so we, we are out of trouble. We are out of the exile. But suddenly we realize that it's not even the time that we're supposed to do the things we promise ourselves we're going to do as soon as we're out of these challenges. You know, sometimes we make promise to ourselves. We say, that, Lord, if you just help me to be out of these difficulties, out of this trouble, Lord, I will make sure the first thing I would do, I would just go and, and, and and just make uh, visit this person. I will go to church. I will serve God. I will do this. I will do that. But as soon as they came out from that trouble, the Bible says they decided it's not yet the time. And so they said now, it is time for you yourself to dwell in your panel houses. This is Haggai speaking through uh, uh, God and, 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 and saying this temple is to it, it lie in ruins. Now, therefore... Thou said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Please say to your neighbor, consider your ways. Say to the next neighbor, maybe this one didn't hear you well. Turn to someone else and say, consider your ways. Okay, they didn't hear you well. Now behave as if you are angry with them. 
just like look at them to the eye and say, consider your ways. Hallelujah. Now, listen to this. Haggai chapter 1 verse 6. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. It, it, that would not be your portion in the name of Jesus. It is not your portion in the name of Jesus. Now please go with me quickly to verse 9. The Bible says to look for much, but indeed it comes to little. It's not your portion in the name of Jesus. And he said, when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above, you withhold the dew, and the earth withhold its fruit. For I call for a drought on the, on the land, and the mountains, and on the grain, and the new wine, and the oil, and whatever the ground brings forth on man and livestock. On all the labor of your hands. I, 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 this is God trying to tell them what you see happening is not the economy, it's not the prime minister, it's not this. It's just that you have diverted from what you said you're going to do. As soon as I bring you out of this exile, you're not doing the things, the, the promises you gave me, you're not doing it. Please, let's look at a guy chapter 2 and just look at now we are moving into discussing the solution to the economic problems. And so here, the Bible says in Haggai chapter 2 verse 15, and now carefully consider from this day forward. Everybody say from this day forward. Before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the law. Since those days, when one came to a heap of 20 evers, there were but 10. When one came to the wine uh, wine vat uh, to draw out of 50 baths from the praise. There were but 20. I struck you with blight and mildew and held in all the labors of your hands. It is not your portion in the name of Jesus. Yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Now in verse 18, the Bible says, consider now this day forward. Everybody say, consider now this day forward. From the 24th day of the month, of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. That is from the day you decided to say, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want to follow your leading. Lord, I just want to serve you. From the day the foundation of the Lord's house, the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Think about the first time you had that experience with the Holy Ghost. The first time you said, Lord, I want to serve you. Consider it. The Bible says, is the seed still in the barn? Do you still have that potential, that graving for God, that yearning of God's presence? He said, do you still have the seed, the still seed in the barn? As yet the wine or the victory, as yet the vine, the vine, the victory, the pomegranate and the olive tree have not yielded fruit. But from this day, I will bless you. Beloved, I just want to call this message, call to examination. There's something we call in data analytics. Sometimes we do um, a bit of uh, auditings and survey appraisals on data to see where you can remove some anomalies, which is removing noise and trying to remove some statistical bias and just making sure the data is clean enough for you to be able to present it and allow managers to make informed decisions. And so there are times in our life that we have to remove some anomalies. We have to remove noise. We have to just avoid some distractions. Now, just so we know, these are the children of Israel. The Lord have just been so kind to them. But suddenly, there came these oh, wicked kings, the Babylonians' uh, rulers, who have taken them into captivity, into exile. And we know that through prophet Jeremiah, it was prophesied that at 70 years, which they have spent in exile, God will release them to return to their place of, to, to, I mean, to their homes and to their place of uh, uh, worships and to their temple. But bear in mind, while they were taken to exile, the temple at Jerusalem was destroyed. And so while they were there, and they were thinking, Lord, the first thing we are going to do as soon as we return, if you can deliver us from this trouble, if you can take me from this place, Lord, the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure I rebuild the temple. They gave their promises to God. 
But just imagine how far you are prayed to say, Lord, as long as, as soon as I get to UK, I will serve you. Lord, as soon as you give me this visa, I mean, if you give me this visa, Lord, as soon as I, I travel, in fact, if I get into my flight, Lord, I will make sure every day in the UK, I will not meet, miss church services. I mean, Lord, if you start this business, if you just make sure, Lord, if you can help me to just establish this business, I will make sure that in that department, I will not rest. Even everybody rests. I will serve you. This was the similar. So it's not like we, you, you, you're experiencing what is new, but just the fact that you experience what they experienced, you also know that in every of those experiences they had, they accorded to them troubles, issues. And that was why the Lord said, you search for more and you work for so much and you I mean you work so much and but yet little is coming. Haven't you experienced that you, you earn a lot of money but it seems it's going to bills? Have you actually asked questions? Is anything or is we just, it's just explanation we give is, is this is economic difficulties. But the truth of the matter is we have to come to a place where we have to say, Lord, where is it that I've I messed up. I've been distracted from the things that I promised you. And so they had this issue. And of course, we had a new king, King Darius, who by the wisdom of God realized that the people, and, and within the Persian rules, they call them the war power. And so he says, these guys got to return back to, to their place. They need to return back to Jerusalem. And so he released them to, to go back. Uh, but the truth of the matter is the people did not realize how far God has loved them. And, and as soon as they returned back, the first thing should have been, let's build God's temple. But everyone was busy. My job, I have shift this afternoon. In the morning, my shift. As soon as you arrive, UK is like, God just wait. Shift in the morning. Shift. I go to work. I have bills. And this was exactly what they were doing. Some of us, we prayed. Sincerely speaking, because, I mean, almost about maybe 99.9% .9 of us here, we, we, we left jobs. We left all of the things. We came here just believing that God, as soon as I get there, I know it's greener pastures. Things are going to work well. But it's not turning out that way. The truth of the matter is you have left your comfort zone. You are coming to a territory you have to learn. And learning statistics shows that it takes at least a year for you to learn the curve. After you have learned the curve, it takes about another six months to understand the routines of that new environment. And then it takes another six months for you to be able to realize that this is what actually I need to do. But the trouble is, our people, we come, I mean, when I say our people, I'm talking about black Asians, whatever race. We come to a place where we suddenly, I mean, bombarded with troubles and challenges and we forget the real thing, which is the God that has made the way in the first place. And so this was exactly what happened. And so now, at this point, the guys are not looking for what is it that haven't done right? They're thinking about how do I make what I'm doing now to be more better? And to do that, the more they try to earn more money, the more it goes into bills. And so this was no, they, they didn't have any solution. And that's why Prophet Agai, the first thing he had to say to them, he says, consider your ways. That is examine your actions yourself and then the second party began to explain the difficulties they explain they, they, they're experiencing from a guy chapter 1 verse 9 then after he has done that he had to explain to them solution to this problem that is hey guy chapter 2 from verse 15 and so the first thing is that a guy explaining the difficulties they had he says how do you then put god first because for every problem there got to be a solution he says, what you are going through is not economic problem, really, because whether you go to U.S., in fact, all of the continents, Africa, Asia, America, the same issue. Do you know a friend of mine we were talking about, it, it's, 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 it's like, it's from um, um, uh, Zimbabwe. And so we were just talking about it. He's, he's also see, uh, uh, one of the managers in one of the automobile companies, analytics uh, or professional. He said to me, it seems as if all African leaders 
they have a place, they have a meeting that we don't know. That they just said, we are going to do this, this way. We are going to behave this way. That if you think that, I don't know how many of us are from Nigeria. If you think Nigeria have so much problem, go to Cameroon. If you think Cameroon has so much, go to Ghana. If you think Ghana has a lot, go to Zimbabwe. It's the same. And you're like, these guys, do you, do you guys have night meeting that we're not, we are not aware? It's the same. And so, it, it's really sad. It, it's sad. But you see, the good news is, the Bible says, they that know God, they that love God, they shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. You know, one of the, the, the previous uh, prime minister, Britain uh, prime minister, um, Gordon Brown, said something. He said, we are living in extraordinary times and extraordinary times requires extraordinary measures. And so you see things have changed the way you know it should be. You got to also apply some measures that moves you from the trajectory of man to the trajectory of God. And so these guys, they said, how do we change what we're doing? How do we change these situations? And so the first things that are called to them was, how do we put God first? Because while they were at exile, they said, God, as soon as we return, we are going to put you first. How would they do that? We are going to rebuild the temple. Indirectly, we are going to go to a place of worship. We are going to serve you. But they didn't do it. And so, hey guys, speaking through the mouth of God, telling them the first thing you got to do is to obey the voice of God. What is it that God told you while you were in exile? While you were in that place, say, Lord, as soon as I travel, I will do this, I will do that. How do we know? Hey guy, chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, Then Zerubbabel, hey guy, chapter 1, verse 12, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shittel, and Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. Obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. Beloved, the voice of God is the word of God. So you, you may ask, how do I hear God? Because I've been attending Bible studies. I don't even know how God speaks. Have you ever read Bible? Have you listened to someone reading Bible? If you have done that, you are actually hearing the voice of God. Because the word of God is the voice of God. And so they realize we need to obey his voice. We need to obey his voice. Number two, quickly. Obey the words of his prophet. How do we know that? Haggai chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, And the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God has sent him. And so after the, the, the Zerubbabel, the, the Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, with all of, their, all of the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord. That's one. Number two. And the words of Haggai. You see, Bible does not mix words. The voice of God is the word of God. But the word of his prophet is because he has heard the voice of God. And so he's speaking the word from the voice that he heard. And he says, you got to obey the word of his prophet. And so the sent man of this commission may just say to you, sit down here. Beloved, it's for your good. Your mama, your papa may just say, don't follow that company. It's for your good. They don't have to have long beard. They don't have to wear a gown and say, I'm a prophet. They don't have to look like that. Just the voice of his prophet. It could be your friend. But you see, we are living in a generation that don't like good, I mean, um, uh, corrections. And, and so we want to live with right. I, it's my right. But you see, one thing is that we forget that every right comes with responsibilities. And so we ignore responsibilities we want to do right. And when right puts us into trouble, we don't even know that's the responsibility we are accorded as a result of trying to say, my right, my right, my right. So the voice of the prophet, the voice of the prophet the Bible says in John chapter 6 verse 68, it is a spirit that quickened the flesh profitable, 
the word that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible says, from now on, we know no man after the flesh. He says, though we know Jesus after the flesh, but now we don't know him anymore after the flesh. That is why you don't look at people the way they are and you just, just conclude on them. This is how they are. This is No, please look at them in the spirit, in the eyes of the spirit. God will open your eyes to see how powerful they are. Amen? Obey the voice of the prophet. Number three, Haggai chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, and the people did fear the Lord. The people did fear the Lord. So number three, to come out of the economic difficulties, the fear of the Lord. You know what the Bible says? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So what do you need to really do well in life? His wisdom. His wisdom. The way we walk and things just seems like it's not enough. You need wisdom to see what you have, how it can be enough. And just the fear of God. Amen? So priorities are important. When we put God first, he's more inclined to bless us. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's look at the, the solution to these economic problems. And because now the Bible says in Haggai chapter 2, uh, we can read from verse 15, which we read before, but I'm going to just read verse 19. Haggai chapter 2 verse 19, the Bible says, Is the seed still in the barn? As yet the wine, the vine, the victory, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yet fruit, have not yielded fruit, but from this day, everybody say, from this day, say from today, from this day, I will bless you. That's what God is saying to you. Say, the Lord will bless me. Say, God has blessed me. Say, I receive my blessings from today in the name of Jesus. The word, the Lord says, I will bless you. That word exemplify, number one, that I will always be with you. How do we know it? Haggai chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible says, then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people saying, I am with you, said the Lord. This is where we get confused. You come to a service like this and the pastor said, God bless you. God bless you. And our mind is thinking as soon as we get home, you know that house we're looking for, somebody will just give us the keys. And then we, we just have the car. We forget that when the Lord said I will bless you, it means I will always be with you. Now, that is the compendium of so many things you are looking for. The house may not be immediate things you receive the keys. But because he said I will always be with you, it will take you through the, the route of looking for the house. So it will take you past the wrong doors. Even the one you think is a good house that you want to move in, God knows it's the wrong one. He will take you past. But pastor just said, God bless you. No, sir. He says, I will always be with you. And if he's been with you always, he will not lead you to the wrong doors. So I will always. And so we have to see it from different perspective. And number two, he says, he will always stay up your spirit. We are living in a time that depression and anxiety is the order of the day. Yesterday, as I was coming, and I saw a, a man, and he's, um, he's, a, he's an English man, and I saw him, he was walking on the street, you know, you get to a traffic light, and they call the car stops, and this man stopped at the traffic light. You see him, he looked responsible, but at the traffic light, he started doing things like, now, if it was a person of my color, right, honestly, I would think he's speaking in tongues. And probably I may be right. But when I saw, I said, ah, oh God, help us. Now, that man is going through mental derail. Somehow, you don't even, we don't know. But what if that thing that is telling him, stop and be doing this. 
Also tell him, stop and carry stone. That person that is coming, that woman that is coming, that boy that is coming, hit on their head. What if, when the Lord says, I will always be with you, he will not allow you to meet people like that. Honestly. So when he says, I will stay up your spirit, it means when people are down, you will say there's a casting. I will say there's a lifting up. When there's a casting down, I will say there's a lifting up. When people are down, I will say I am up. Because God has stayed up your spirit. Hallelujah. And how do we know that? Haggai chapter 1 verse 14. We run quickly because of time. The Bible says, And the Lord stayed up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shittel. We knew the rest of the story. That as soon as the spirit of, of, of Zerubbabel was stayed up, he gathered the guys and the foundation of the temple was laid. Stayed up your spirit to see those potential, those gifts, those talents that you have on the inside. How do you harness them to bring them to life? So it's not dead yet. My, it's not dead yet. The Lord is still walking. Amen? The Lord is still walking. Please don't lose hope. Please, this is what God said I should tell you. Don't think you have made mistakes. Amen? You, maybe you move, you relocated, maybe you are in a place that you feel things were not the way you had or you were told. Please, the Lord said I should tell you, don't even give a thought that you have made the mistakes. He says, look at the children of Israel. At wilderness experience, they didn't even know because they focused too much on the problem. They didn't know God was training them. God was learning the curve of where they are going so they can manage their face. So please, you've not made mistakes, sir. You've not made any wrong choice, ma. It's just a learning curve. Say to your neighbor, it's a learning curve. Say with time, all will be sorted. We will look back and smile and say, Lord, thank you that I did not give up. I did not give up. I did not go back. I did not give up. In Jesus' name. Quickly. The third word, I will bless you, which we say and simplify. Number three is that God says, I will always provide for you for the work you need to do. And so, hey guys, chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, and they, and, and they came and did walk in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. And now, this is the last part, which is the glory of the new house. What God is saying, he says, the glory of this latter house, that's Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in, his, in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. What you are experiencing now, sir, man, is nothing to compare to what God is about to reveal to you. In the name of Jesus, they will look at you and say, I thought he was messed up. I thought she was messed up. I thought, I just thought things were really down for him, for her. And they will look at you and say, I, I, I thought it was another person. You said, no, you, you got it wrong. It's me. It's me. The Lord was cooking me, but you didn't know. The Lord was preparing me, you didn't know. Can we just lift up our hands and say, Father, thank you. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you continue to do. Thank you for your word. Thank you for also, God, that you love us so much that you've given us life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you are a faithful God. There is none like you. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Please, without further ado, um, we would have prayed because I have a urge in my spirit for us to pray. I mean, Daddy will lead us to pray, at least one prayer before we go. But let's go to just the, the, the let's talk about what you need to do. You're doing something now, but how would you do what you're doing now differently? Uh, you know that data has evolves around different spectrums of our lives. It, in, in, in Africa, in Asia, people talk about oils and all of that. You realize that data has become another oil yet on top. 
10 years ago, and, and people were talking on high streets everywhere, big data, big data, big data, big data. Everybody, they were having that problem. And of course, it's actually big data because some of us, we get to church by driving, by buying fuel, and then we, we take on a bus and taxis and all of that. All of this process, data is produced. And so the word big data is being dissected into four different compartments. The first one is that the big data, we are talking about the voluminous of this data, how big it is. And then number two, we are talking about the variety of it, the size and form that this data comes. By the way, when we are talking about data, it's not anything abstract. Data simply means, uh, uh, okay, maybe you can say types of data. You're talking about voice. So you're talking to me like I'm talking to you now. Somebody can put this into a, a sort of columns and charts and produce variables from it. He said, this is what he says, and this is what he says, and data is produced. Number two, data is audio. You are hearing me. So data is being produced. Number three, data is graphics. Some of us can see uh, a picture of somebody like this, and you could describe his look and tell story because you could tell that he's happy the way he looks. And so that's data. And then data is, uh, is, is, is video. You see things, you already interpret what it is, right? And so then the, the number two, we say the data one is voluminous. Number two is, is, is uh, the velocity of the data, which is the speed in which this data is produced. And then we talk about the, um, the va uh, veracity of this data. The different ways some companies use different tools. We call it different analytical tools to, 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 to make sure they analyze this data. And then we talk about the, um, the, 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 the fact that data comes in these four forms, which is voluminous, veracity. It comes about the variety of it. And then it comes about the, um, did I mention four? Velocity, thank you. And so these, these, these different forms means that we take different routes. We take different ways to church, but we all produce what? Data. It now means that our job now, maybe in the next 10 years, we might just be sitting in the comfort of our room, selling business to people all over the world. And to do that means that the things you're doing now Meeting people like, for example, in the banking industries back then, I, re I realized that we go to customers, we go to Lakey, we talk to them, come and open accounts with us and all of that. Now you don't need that. You can still upsell business to those same customers. How? You're talking to their details, their data. And they will still be banking with you guys without meeting you for the first time. And so they are, whether accountants, lawyers, and all of these things are changing. And therefore, the new oil yet on top, which is the data analytics, the industries demands a lot of people with hands-on skills. Hands-on skills. Because it's not really longer that what, what do you study is about what can you do, sir? What can you do? And so because of that, we're having this brief uh, presentation that I'm just going to explain quickly. Please, can we have the slides? Um, we just moved to the M. And so we call it reimagining to the top. Reimagining to the top. The, the media, are we there? Um, Reimagining to the top. So it just means what you're doing now. See a different way you can do it. Hallelujah. How can you do it differently? Then can we move to the end? So in data and business analytics, it's because uh, once you know how to uh, talk to data, remove noise, remove some anomalies and all of that, you'll be able to deal with other things that you need to do in terms of working as a business analyst, as business intelligence analyst. All of these are just compendium of having the, the substratums, which is the data skills. And so the idea behind this little presentation is to empower us with information that allowed us to do things more uh, better than we do now or allowed us to, to become the best in life, right? And we know that information we consume can either stress us or wear us down. It's just like the food we eat. We can eat too much food and we can consume too much information. Please, the ushers will share this form uh, and there's a slip uh, that the ushers will share as well. Please, the slip, just write, if you're interested, just write your name and your phone number, your email. The office will call you uh, on Monday and then um, talk you through because there won't be time for me to meet you and discuss one-on-one. -on -one. So please, 
pick this, and then the number is there. But right in that slip, your phone number so that the office will call you. When you write, we know that you are interested to change things, right? Now, and, and, and we, we know that people that should enroll, they're not just job-seeking people, but it's just uh, people who are really ready to change the course of their life because of what they know is going to happen in the future. Please, can we move to, I'm leaving this slide completely and just saying all of the things that I would have said, but when we talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'll explain better. Can we move to the process? Now, the process is the first thing we review your CV. How? Your CV is you. So when we talk about reviewing your CV, we're actually talking about you. We ask questions like, what have you done in the past? What did you study at the university? And all of that. And then we tell out all of this into our machine learning. And all of this variable is to allow us to tell out what is good for you. Because it's not what is good for you, is for everyone. It's not what is raining, it's good for you actually. So we got to know that what you are doing is right for you. And so our business model is quite different. And then once we do that, we match your skill set to the market. We say, okay, uh, this is what you've done in the past. This is because we are moving you from analogical platform to digitalized platform. What you used to do, you talk to customers. Now you're going to talk to data, their data, right? And so then we discuss the options. What are the options that we're going to train you on? And then once we do that, you begin the training. The trainings are hands-on. It's not theoretical. You're going to actually use some tools, software tools. You're thinking, I've not, I didn't, I, I, you know, I, didn't, I don't like maths. I don't like all this subject. Uh, how would I be able to do it? If you have the will, if you have the mindset, think about it. When you started that university, nobody in the family have actually taught you you're going to pass GST 101. But you got into the university, you study and you read and you pass and you graduated, Right? The same spirit, the same mind, the same feelings. Once you set your heart to do something, just learn it. And you are in an environment where you learn hands-on. It's not theory and you'll be good. Then after that, we do interview prep, which is just talking you through the process of interview. And then, of course, the race becomes history. Please, can we rise to our feet? Can we rise to your feet? Before we call our daddy, I just want us to pray this prayer that has been a burden in my heart. Hallelujah. How many of us know that Jesus came to the earth and he didn't die because of his sin. He didn't die because of the wrongdoing of his own will. The thing is, he died because of me. 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 Now, my question is, what is it that drives him to die because of me? He didn't know me like I'm going to be here. But what is that thing? So the prayer we're going to pray this afternoon. He says, sir. He says, God. Just listen everybody. You're going to say, God. Whatever made Jesus to come and die for me. Do you know that is grace? That is potential. Whatever made Jesus come and die for me. What made him come to earth? The Bible says in everything he was found blemish. What made him die for me? Lord, deliver to me a little portion of that. Begin to pray that prayer. You will begin to have hunger for the things that you really want to do. Say, God, whatever made Jesus come to die for me, Lord, grant me access to a little portion of that. Say, Father, release to me a little push. Now, maybe you don't understand this question. Let me just, let me say something. One minute, please excuse me. My, my father in the Lord, Dr. Paul Enenche, was um, one of the crusade Red Bonke organized. He went to the airport with the guys that was picking him. Was picking Ray and Bonke. And he said, when they were taking him back to the airport, and he just knelt down, he said, pray for me. He said, Ray and Bonke had him, I asked him, what do you want me to pray for? He said, pray for me. Ray and Bonke just lay a hand on him, he said. 
He said, whatever made Jesus come to earth, I give you a little portion of that in the name of Jesus. And now we can see that grace speaking. So you can pray this prayer with violence. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not bread and butter. The kingdom of God is for people who can take territory. It's for people who can say, Lord, enough is enough. Say, Lord, whatever made Jesus come to earth to die, give me a little portion of that grace. Begin to pray. Lord, whatever made Jesus Jesus, come to it, oh God. Grant me access to that portion. Grant me access to that portion. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we need that grace. We need that anointing. We need that power. What made him come to earth? We are living in a time that we need grace. We are living in a time that we need anointing. We are living in a time we need power. We are living in a time we need strength. We are living in a time, Lord, that things seem to be difficult. Lord, give me access to the grace that made Jesus. Lord, grant this church, grant our men, Lord, give our women the grace, that access to what made Jesus. Lord, families are going through stuff. Lord, parents are going through stuff. Lord, young men and women are going through stuff. Lord, grant them access to that grace, access to that potential. Access to that power. Lift up your voice and give him thanks. Lift up your hands. Lift up your two hands, everyone. And say, Lord, I give you thanks. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I magnify your name. Lord, I glorify your name. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Ah, chapel of his glory. Can you just praise the Lord? Can you give him thanks? Can you give him worship? As the Lord, you've been faithful. Lord, I've been strong. The year started, it looked like I will not have a headwear. I would not make it up to this point. But you have been faithful. You kept my family. You kept me. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, we thank you. From this day forward, I will bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless your family. The Lord bless your children. The Lord bless your wife. The Lord bless your husband. The Lord bless your family. The Lord bless Chapel of Glory. The nations of the earth shall come and say, let's go. That is is where the Lord is. We know the Lord is with them. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We glorify your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Be thou exalted. I saw favor. I saw peace. I saw faith. I saw victory. Lord, so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Victory, everyone. Victory, everyone. Victory, everyone. Victory, everyone. Lord faith, Lord peace. Peace that surpasses all human understanding. Let that peace reign in your heart. Let that peace reign in your family. Reign in your marriages. Reign in your home. In the life of your children. Your children will not miss it. No, you will not miss it. Who feel like praying in this house? Lord, Atali Bahara Talia, Abarusi Kapata, say, Father, I see victory. Lord, I see favor. Lord, I see favor. Grace, Sarabasata, Libaratoli.
Africa. Thank you, Jesus, for the presence of God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we worship you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Father.